So today we've been working on some end doors for these new Gothic high tunnel, well actually they're Caterpillar tunnels from the Farmer's Friend Supply Company. Really love them. This year I wanted to have some more covered growing area for the winter time and we have two 40 foot tunnels. Uh, they were from a 50 foot tunnel kit and I have them here in this garden plot. Uh, blessings of having lots of extended families. We were able to put them up in one day. They're very easy to install and we left the ends off because I wanted to kind of think through how I wanted the doors. I wanted them to be secure but simple and not too expensive. So in researching what type of uh, doors are available or good for caterpillar tunnels, ones that are a little more temporary, these are again the benefit of a caterpillar tunnel is that they're movable. These are premium tunnel kits so they actually do have a a purlin at the top and some more bracing so they're a little bit more permanent but uh, but they're still pretty easy to move and the scissor type doors which I'm going to show you today are what I decided on actually Johnny selected seeds has a really good PDF instruction um, guide that you can download and that's what I'm using to build these off of but when I was trying to build them I didn't find any video online explaining really well how to how to install them so hopefully this will help some of y'all that are trying to do the same thing so let's go take a look at what we one of the ones we've already installed here so the basic concept of a uh, scissor door is that it opens like a pair of scissors so this one is currently closed there's just a flap on the bottom here it's not sealed very well so we put a uh, sandbag on it you can see where we have a, a wing nut here that I can just take off from the outside. And then this one door here, put these carefully there so I don't lose them, opens up. And I have a bungee cord that holds it open. So you could leave just one door open like this, uh, which would allow you to have access, but still some protection. I like that. Um, and then this one would also come off. And you can hang it up here as well. This uh, rod here just holds them in place and makes it nice and secure. So looking forward to using these over the winter and we're, we still have a couple more doors to do. So we're going to invite you to come and see how we install one from start to finish. So before we get started, I want to show you some of the materials that I got together in order to build my tunnel ends. Uh, one thing that you're definitely going to need is enough plastic to cover the end. These tunnels uh, from Farmer's Friend come with uh, plenty of plastic to, uh, to cover the ends, but just kind of double check and make sure. I measured and these are about um, 10 feet, I think, to the, uh, yeah, about 10 feet to the top and 14 feet side to side. So you can, uh, we'll cut a piece of plastic later and show you how that works. But as far as uh, for the scissor itself, you're gonna need a few pieces of top link rail. These I've already uh, pre, uh, assembled and made. If you want to come look, we have uh, these, uh, the little end here that has a brace band and a nut and a bolt to be able to connect it. So I had to drill through and hook this on the end. I measured the height from the top of my tunnel and cut it one foot from the ground. So this ended up being nine feet since I have 10 feet at the peak. Another thing when you were, when I built the tunnel that I made sure that I did and that you'll have to make sure you do if uh, you'll, in order to install these doors, uh, you will have to have at least on the end a purlin um, and you need to have it stick out about, I stuck mine out about four inches uh, past the last rib here and that way we have something to hook and hang our two uh, door uprights here. So I have two of these that are nine feet long, got 10 foot sections of top link rail for chain link. And then this here is a five foot piece. So I cut one in half and that's going to be our piece that we actually drive into the ground. So you kind of need two 
and uh, and a half pieces for each wall. So that would be five pieces total for two, two doors. Then we also have uh, already installed across this um, bow is a wiggle wire U-channel. And then we need a few extra pieces of wiggle wire to install the, um, the door plastic over the, the bow. I have a few bungee cords here to hold back the doors. Have a drill for drilling holes through the the rails, the pipes here, and some nut drivers for our self-tapping screws. Have one bolt with a, a wing nut on it. Some scissors for the plastic here. A nice uh, rubber clamp for temporarily holding the plastic in place. Sledgehammer for driving our post into the ground. And we also have these uh, plastic clips or snap clamps. These are for one inch PVC pipe, which work on this top link rail here, um, which is one and three eighths inches is what the top link rail is. But the one inch PVC clamps work because PVC is so much thicker um, on this outside diameter. So those are the, uh, the supplies we have in addition to a ladder to be able to get up top. And let's go ahead and get started by driving the ground post in to get started. So before we can install this upright support post, we actually have to know where it goes. And in order to do that, we have to go ahead and hang these posts, I mean these uh, uprights on the extension of the purlin. Just put one on. I'm going to put the other one on and then we're going to, in order to, be, to keep them secure, we're going to go put a screw in the top to keep them from sliding off while we're working down here. When I was first uh, installing the, the doors on my, the other tunnels, I had to decide where to place this post because at the moment uh, we're on a slight slope this direction. So where these poles hang vertical is actually off center of where the center of this metal bed is. So I could have decided to allow these doors to these to remain vertical and then I would have had one door a little bit bigger than the other, but I actually decided it would probably look better and work best to center the post here with the middle of my center bed here. So the seven foot from each side since it's is 14 feet wide. And it just looks a lot better even though the doors are a little bit canted uh, to the side when they're actually closed like this. So you can decide on your tunnel if it's on a hill uh, how you wanna do that. But on mine, I decided to split the difference down the center. So I just uh, planted a row of kale in the middle of this bed and still have the pole here where I put my planting stick so I know where the center is all these um, are going to be lined up stacked up on each other with the long bolt to secure them together so i want to make sure that this is lined up with all of these and then lined up with that hole right there so this looks pretty good and i'm going to take my pair of scissors i have landscape fabric around my plot here and i just need to cut a hole in the fabric for my pipe. There we go. Got us a little flap there. All right, now we're ready to hammer this in. I have my mark here, and we're going to use our bungees that I installed on went ahead and installed over here to hold these back out of the way while I'm working. That'll just make it a lot easier. And okay, for this next part, I require an assistant.
Okay, now we're gonna measure here. Shooting for three and a half feet. Where are we at? Uh, three and a half exactly. Three and a half exactly. Well, there's a word. That works <laughs> great. Good thing I didn't hit it any more than that. All right. So next we just got to test our angle of the pipe when we when we hammer it in sometimes it can move side to side and looking here I need to pull it this way just a little bit and voila so the next step is we're going to drill a hole through all of these and on the other tunnels, I, uh, other doors I've done so far, drilled it about eight inches down from the top. Uh, it seemed to work well. So we're gonna drill a hole all the way through. That will allow us to put our wing uh, bolt and wing nut through it. So I'm gonna start with a pilot hole and then, and then I'll widen it out to the size hole that we need for the actual bolt. All right, let's see if our holes are lined up enough for our bolt to fit through. Yay, praise the Lord, there we go. So, these will all stay together with this wing nut here. There we go. All right, so we have our Uprights installed, and we'll be adjusting them later as we install the plastic, but now we're gonna go and cut our two pieces of plastic that are gonna be for either side of our door here. So before I uh, we installed the plastic on here, what I did is I went ahead and trimmed off the plastic that was on the, uh, the edge of the tunnel here down to about 10 inches of extra uh, these tunnels are designed to be able to move if you want to. And I didn't want to trim it all the way down flush because it'd be hard if we wanted to install this piece of plastic again. I wanted to have a little bit to grab onto, but too much extra here can get in your way. So nice and tidy and hopefully ready to put the, for us to put the other plastic on. Okay, as with cutting anything, measure not twice, three, four, think about, think about what you're measuring um, before you cut it because especially if you have a piece of plastic that you're not going to have a lot of uh, wiggle room make sure that you really think through how big you need your pieces for the doors before you cut them what we've uh, found here with the doors we've been installing is the leftover roll from our farmer's friend uh, gothic high tunnels here our caterpillar tunnels pardon me our tunnels are 14 feet wide, and so each door is gonna be exactly about seven feet. And just to make sure I have plenty to wrap around and clip on each side, I'm gonna cut, add an extra foot on each end for nine feet. So what, I, what I'm gonna do here is roll out my plastic uh, where I have nine feet, cut it there, then cut it down the middle, and we can fold them out, and each one will be tall enough to go on each door. And we'll have both of our door pieces here. There's probably a lot of different ways uh, to put this up and maybe you have some suggested ways to do it that are better than this, but at least this what's, is what has worked for us. I use one of these uh, rubber clamps here to hold it temporarily at the top. We have our um, plastic clamps here that we're gonna use to clip it on, and I'm using five for each side. That's what the Johnny's uh, scissor door instructions recommended. So I'm gonna put them down there and in order to know where we need to attach the plastic and to, to maintain the right tension, I like to try to I like to keep these upright poles connected to the ground post while I clip it on. Uh, and 
this bolt right here, this is the way it's going to be installed at the end so that you can take the wing nut off and get into the, into the tunnel from the outside. But while we install the plastic, I'm going to flip it around so that the head's on this side. And then after we uh, clip the plastic on here, I'll cut a little hole and pull that bolt out so we can move it out of the way and connect the plastic onto the next one. Okay, so we have the piece of plastic temporarily put in place. I have my clamp holding it up here on the top. And then we have two of the snap clamps on and I'm gonna take a piece of wiggle wire now and this channel that's attached to this bow, this bow here. We're going to kind of get some tension on it, pull it nice and tight uh, where it takes the tension out based on our clamps installed down there. I'm gonna go up to the peak, start, start my wiggle wire, and wiggle down while I try to take the slack out of the piece here. So after installing the plastic on the first door, what we've uh, done is moved it up out of the way and used the bungee to keep it out of the uh, way while we work on this one. And then I just used the bolt to connect it back here. The uh, one thing that we did find on the first door that we did is we wanted to be careful not to pull the second door too tight because what happens with this, with this ground post is it gets pulled that direction. And then when you want to bring this other door over, then you've uh, it it they won't meet and there's there's too much tension. So you want to get some get good tension on this one, but not pull it so far that it's pulling the ground post that direction. Okay, so what I was explaining earlier about making sure that you don't pull both of yours too tight so that they don't actually meet after you connect the plastic. Uh, well, that happened here. One reason is because our ground post is a little loose that we drove in for some reason. It must have been especially soft here. So it kind of leaned over to one side when I attached the plastic on this one. So if you can see, even if I pull it tight, I can't get them to overlap. So we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and unclip these white clips, the, the snap clips here on this one, take a little bit of slack out of it, and then we'll try it again and get it until both of them meet up perfectly. So it seems like what the best way for, especially for one of the ground posts, if they're not entirely secure, is uh, once you get po both of the pieces of plastic up, connect the one that's going to be up against the post first, and try to pull it over the ground, the, pull it over to maintain some tension on it while you connect it. And then after you've, uh, we've took the clips off of this one and we're putting it on, so now they're both going to be lined up. We have the one behind already in place. So now we're going to bring this piece of plastic down, and we can get a nice tension on it and not to really worry about a whole lot of anything because it's already nice and lined up. So I can take these clips pop them into place. Okay, so we just got all the plastic trimmed and the doors basically installed. Um, another uh, tip that's recommended is to put uh, your self-tapping screws into each one of these clamps in order to make them permanently, you know, connect onto here. I'm going to probably leave mine just 
cla uh, clipped onto here for a little while to make sure that the door works well and I don't need to adjust them and then I can finally anchor them in. Over here on the sides, because a caterpillar tunnel like this, uh, you can see on this tunnel here, the way that it vents is through the plastic actually lifting up. I had to be careful about how I secure it um, as far as uh, keeping the, the plastic for the sides itself from being able to give slack to the rest of the tunnel. So what we've done, at least temporarily here, is we only brought the wiggle wire down part of the way, and then we use this clip on the bottom to secure the plastic. So if we need to vent it later and lift the plastic up some, we can do that. Maybe there's a better solution, but that's what we're going to try to start with. We're using these sandbags to kind of seal the bottom of the door while it's closed. When we want to open it, try it out, see how it works here. Our wing nut, our lock nut. Our door open. And close back. I think I like it. Okay, so a helpful resource that I mentioned earlier that you might want to try, we'll try to have links for this in the show notes, but there's instructions that you can get off of Johnny Selected Seeds here for making these scissor doors, and that's what I printed off, printed off and used. Um, so it has the supply list and other things on there. And uh, when I first was installing these, if you really wanted to move them, one of the things that I considered was installing the doors first, which is what a lot of people do because what it enables you to do is if I wanted to move these tunnels, I could theoretically uh, take off the covering plastic if it was installed after the door, and then I could pick up the door um, bow itself and just move it and set it up without disassembling uh, my door here, which is what I'll have to do if I move this tunnel. But Sometimes you have to work with what you got, and we had people to come and help install the tunnels all at once, and we wanted to get that knocked out. So, planning on keeping these here for at least several seasons. So, happy with it, grateful we got this done. It's supposed to get cold next week, so grateful we uh, have some doors to protect our crops in here. So, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comments section. And thanks so much for watching.